Okay, hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar on Cloud BI best practices. My name is John Ryan and I'm the Director of Product Marketing at Yellowfin. And today we've got an action-packed webinar for you where we're going to give you an introduction to Cloud BI. We're going to show you how fast and easy it is to get started with Cloud BI yourselves, uh, where we'll spin up a, an instance of Yellowfin inside of Amazon Web Services and give you a very fast tour. And I'll share with you some of the best practices that we've learned for Cloud BI success once you have gotten started. So for those of you who don't know, um, Yellowfin's a global business intelligence and analytics software platform. Our vision is to make BI easy and we have over 10,000 companies using our software across the world with over 1 million end users across 70 countries worldwide. And you can see here Yellowfin's being used by organisations of all sizes from telcos to leading retail brands, airlines, healthcare institutions, financial services and leading online companies. So um, today's webinar is all about Cloud BI and Yellowfin is considered a leader in this space. And the most recent Bark BI survey, um, their founder and CEO says that Cloud BI is clearly a space that Yellowfin dominates, ranking top for ad hoc reporting and dashboards for Cloud BI over the past three years. And when you look at the results from this survey, you can see that the margin is quite substantial uh, between Yellowfin ranked number one and even the second place on that list. And um, this is quite surprising to some because Yellowfin does not actually offer our own hosted Cloud BI environments for customers to use. However, we do make it very, very easy for our customers and our partners to create their own hosted Cloud BI environments and it's uh, very common that our customers do deploy in a cloud scenario. And as uh, per the quote, you know, these results are no fluke. Yellowfin's now been the leader in this space for the last three years in a row. And if you, you would like to see more details on these results, you can download Barks of BI Survey 14 from the Yellowfin website where you can also see that Yellowfin's a leader in other things related to cloud as well, um, such as innovation, mobile BI, which has a very strong linkage to the cloud, and most importantly, price to value as well. So again, if you would like to learn more about this, you can download this report from the Yellowfin website. So today's topic is all about Cloud BI, and Cloud BI is basically a business intelligence platform that is hosted on a virtual network such as the internet. And there are different types of Cloud BI definitions, including private clouds, uh, where you would host uh, the network on your own hardware or a dedicated environment in a private network. Uh, there are also public clouds where that infrastructure and the platform are hosted via a third party on shared resources. And there's also software as a service providers that um, manage the hardware and the BI platform for you on your behalf. So today's webinar, most of the content will be applicable to all three of these definitions. However, as I do present this, I will be presenting from the perspective of somebody wanting to deploy their own cloud BI uh, environment, either on a public or a private uh, cloud provider such as Amazon Web Service, um, because that's certainly where we're seeing most of the growth. So speaking of growth, there are a number of statistics uh, to back up the growth in Cloud BI and a recent study from Nucleus Research uh, states that 61% of on-premise customers are considering moving to the cloud in the next two years and 70% of organisations are considering cloud as their primary platform for new analytics projects. And then finally, by 2020, fewer than 10% of analytics deployments will be entirely on-premise. So what is driving that change? And ultimately, it's all about value or return on investment. So Nucleus Research found that Cloud BI deployments can deliver 1.7 times the return on investment of on-premise implementations. And as you can see, uh, there's a number of quotes there talking about the ROI multiplier of cloud and how it's the next big wave in the industry. But um, you know, ultimately, what is driving uh, this better return on investment and what are the actual benefits uh, that cloud can deliver to uh, give you more value? So cloud it has many benefits. If, if I quickly run through these, you talk about faster deployment in that you can literally just get started in minutes with just a few clicks. And uh, we're going to show you this in a demonstration in just a moment as well as there's a very nice pay-as-you-go model. Uh, so with Cloud BI projects, you don't need to procure expensive hardware. Um, you don't need to manage that hardware or pay people 
to manage that hardware. And a good cloud provider will certainly have high security and better monitoring skills and, and uh, service levels agreements than most organisations um, that run their BI in-house. Uh, you also don't need to go through long negotiation processes of acquiring all the associated software and you can literally just get started in a few clicks and try before you buy rather than making that expensive upfront investment. Flexibility is another benefit. So if you want to have a short-term project which might say only last three to six months or perhaps if you're just wanting to do a, a proper pilot for a proof of concept, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be spending huge sums of money on expensive hardware and dealing with software vendors that are really trying to sign you up for a three-year deal. Uh, so the cloud gives you a lot of flexibility around the self-service. You have um, complete control of the environment and it can save you a lot of steps as well. The ability to scale up and scale down is another huge benefit of the cloud and the inherent scalability um, means that you can be more responsive to your customers' needs when peak demands arise. So rather than settling, you know, without really knowing, making a guess ultimately what the demand might be, the cloud gives you an environment when you can scale dynamically to meet peak demands. And it also prevents you from being caught out um, with huge expenses in case your Cloud BI project is not quite as successful as you planned or really worrying about making that big investment up front. So with the Cloud you can just build it and test it and scale it to match the actual demand. And overall these benefits do translate to faster time to value, less risk and overall uh, lower total cost of ownership. So um, we could talk about this all day but it's much better if we just uh, show you this. So in the next 10 minutes uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin up a uh, fresh instance of Yellowfin for AWS and we'll just show you how to register that and um, get started using Yellowfin for yourself. Um, so this is, uh, if, if, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, um, this is Amazon Web Services and once you've uh, signed in and got your log on, um, you'll be able to see that uh, Amazon offer a whole heap of uh, different services that you can choose from. There's four that I'm going to be talking about today, which is Amazon EC2, which is their uh, virtual servers in the cloud. So when we spin up Yellowfin for AWS, um, we're going to be doing that inside of EC2. Uh, there's also their databases. So there's Amazon RDS, uh, which is where you can spin up a relational database such as MySQL or Postgres, Oracle SQL Server, for example. And also Amazon Redshift, which is Amazon's own uh, analytical, uh, massively parallel database. So um, Redshift and RDS are not the same thing, it's not acronyms. Um, and really Redshift is uh, better suited to big data or, or um, if you have the need for very fast performance. And then finally, the other uh, component which we'll mention later on in today's webinar is Amazon S3 which is a scalable storage um, for the cloud and that can be a great uh, landing area for you to dump your data into the Amazon environment. Um, so we just want to show you how fast and easy it is to get started in this demonstration. So I'm just going to go into EC2 and here you'll see that I have control panel where I can start up instances, I can see uh, how my different instances are running and I can take snapshots of different environments. And getting started with Yellowfin for AWS is really easy. I just click on Launch Instance. I go to the Amazon Marketplace where you can find it. I'm going to search for Yellowfin. And you can see here um, this is our instance that we're going to launch. Now what makes this uh, instance particularly special is that we've um, included a, a three-user 12-month subscription as part of this instance, which means that you can uh, get started with Yellowfin for AWS and test it out um, for up to three users for 12 months for nothing. It's free. So um, if you do want to scale, that's very easy. You just need to co contact us for a different license where, where you can upgrade. Um, but it is you know, a tremendous way to be able to prove Cloud BI for yourselves at no risk. Um, so uh, we just want to get started. So we're going to press select. And our next options, which you see across the top, are very straightforward. We just need to choose what type of hardware we want. So Yellowfin's minimum recommendation is uh, T2 medium or higher. Um, however, because this is a pretty uh, simple, straightforward 
uh, webinar, I'm actually going to go uh, with the basic free tier. So now we're getting a free version of Yellowfin and running it on uh, Amazon's hardware at no cost. Um, we can make any type of configurations that we need to on this hardware um, or add new storage, but I'm just going to go to review and launch and start launching our um, version of Yellowfin for AWS. So um, while this is going on, um, I'll just give you a very, very quick tour of uh, the console. But essentially what's happening now is Amazon is spinning up the virtual environment uh, with Yellowfin on that. Okay, so you can see your instance is now launching. I'm going to click View Instance. Uh, I'm just going to give this a name, so we'll call this Yellowfin Demo. And um, this is really your portal where you can add, change things such as the different security settings. And once uh, once you are ready to get started, it's it's uh, very very basic. You just need to go to the public IP address. And um, that's where you're going to be able to find Yellowfin. And you know this environment. Once I've got this up and running, I can take different snapshots and I can do different monitoring tools on it. But uh, we'll save that for for a later time. So um, I just need to grab that uh, public IP address, paste that into my browser, and this might just require another minute while it's initializing. But in a minute, you're going to see this change to uh, Yellowfin, and then our instance is ready to go. So um, so far, it's taken us about uh, three minutes um, and only a few different clicks. And this should be ready to go in just one moment. So here we go. So this is uh, Yellowfin for AWS. Um, if you have used Yellowfin before, it's just exactly the same product. Um, the only thing that we've really made different apart from having that license uh, bundled with it is that um, you do need to register to receive your login. So when you download Yellowfin from our website, uh, we send you an email with the login details. However, because I can spin up this instance um, anytime I want, customers don't know that username and password, uh, we do need a way to send that to them. So I'm just going to fill in my details here. Uh, I find it hard to type and uh, talk at the same time, so just give me one moment. Okay, just going to put in my country. You do need to put in all of the details um, to get this sent. Okay, and this is going to go and send me an email uh, with the username and password as well as some help guides um, in terms of how you get started with Yellowfin, so links to our support pages and wikis, as well as some help in terms of how you connect to things such as Amazon Redshift. Um, so once you do press OK, you notice that that uh, registration page has now disappeared. So we're now back to just a standard version of Yellowfin. And um, I'm just going to quickly log into this to give you just a very, very quick tour. Um, but if you, for those of you who haven't seen Yellowfin before, um, it's a very easy to use, intuitive environment. Um, You've got our dashboards, which are there for default, and we've supplied you with five different types of dashboards um, so that you can, uh, I guess, have an opportunity to see the different ways that you could be displaying your data. Um, this first tab is specifically designed for uh, ways you can get a high-level view of your organisation, but we've got lots of great examples there for being able to drill, um, doing analysis, um, lots of very cool ways to do mapping, uh, as well as time series as well. Uh, if you do want to create a report for yourself, you just need to go to Create Report, and from there you can either choose a CSV or connect to a database that you need to. Um, and if you do want to connect to something like Amazon Redshift, that's very, very easy. I just go to administration. Um, this is our administration console where we can uh, control everything in terms of users, adding new users, giving them permissions, uh, and configuring Yellowfin however we, we would like. Um, but if I do want to connect to Redshift, I just need to add a data source. And um, under the different databases, you can see here we've got uh, lots and lots of different databases that are available, but um, Amazon RDS and Amazon Redshift are two of the options there, so you just need to select that. Okay, so um, I guess, yeah, that, that took us uh, somewhere about 
uh, you know, seven or so minutes, and what we've done is we've spun up an instance and just given you a very, very uh, brief tour of that. Um, you know, that's really what the whole point of this demonstration is. Just it is fast and easy to get going. Okay. Now that uh, you have seen what it takes to get started with your life in yourself, um, you can go and do this yourself. There was no smokings at all for anything that we just did. Um, however, as you get ready to flesh out your Cloud BI environment with your own data and get ready to deploy this safely to end users, there are a number of challenges that we want you to be aware of. And the first of those challenges is understanding where the data lives. So if your IT policy is that your data is kept on-premise, locked behind a very tight firewall, then Cloud BI probably isn't for you. Uh, it's certainly beneficial to keep your BI environment as close to the data as possible. So if you're going to have challenges with that, then you're much better off just deploying BI on-premise. Uh, security and privacy concerns are something that you might have to deal with and some organisations or even just some people are going to find Cloud BI simply too risky a prospect for what they do. And there can be legitimate um, cases for this. Um, it might be that you've got very sensitive data you don't want on foreign hardware or it could be sovereignty issues um, where you're not allowed to put that data on a, another country's hardware. Um, however, in most cases, these uh, concerns are quite unfounded and in fact you'll find that the big cloud providers can offer far better security facilities and uptime than if you were to run that yourself in-house. Uh, loss of control can also uh, be a challenge for some and some people are just going to prefer to be able to walk up to the hardware and make configurations themselves. However, the flip side to that is the benefit in that it's simply one less thing that you need to manage and um, from an infrastructure perspective, there's clearly merits to both of those arguments. However, from a BI perspective, um, certainly with Yellowfin, this is not something you need to be concerned about at all because Yellowfin will give you the exact same control of your BI environment if it is either on-premise or in the cloud. It will be the same experience for you. Data integration and performance, you have to get those right. If your Cloud BI environment does not have good integration with the data, then it's like building a house with bad plumbing. So you've got to make sure you get this right or your BI deployment will stink. And it's the same with performance. So the less responsive your BI environment is, the less users are likely to use it. Uh, user experience plays a massive uh, a part in terms of a successful Cloud BI environment. And you need to uh, really think about the different types of users that might be using your Cloud BI environment. There's three types of users that we uh, really try to think about. The first is the non-technical BI consumers or the actual decision makers. And what these guys want really is um, the ability to interact with the data through a dashboard. So they do want to be able to slice and dice the data, but they don't want to have to create reports from scratch themselves. Um, whereas the data analysts, who are our second group, that's exactly what they want. They want the ability uh, to use data discovery tools to explore the data and create new reports and dashboards. And then finally, you've got your IT department who want the ability to administer and govern uh, that BI environment, essentially giving different users uh, you know, you know, different permissions, adding, deleting new users, doing upgrades, things like that. So your BI tool needs to be able to cater for all of these different types of audiences really well, not just cater for one really well, but be quite difficult for the others. Cost, we mentioned cost earlier in the webinar as a major benefit of Cloud BI, and that's true. However, you do want to make sure you manage the costs because, you know, there can be a challenge, um, for instance, if somebody spins up a uh, environment in AWS and you don't know if it's being used or not. Um, and Amazon certainly give you uh, the, the ability to put processes in place to dynamically scale up or scale down to meet the demand as well. So these are definitely things that you want to think about. And then finally, you have to have the skills and that can always be a challenge. So um, please take note of these key challenges because they are things that you'll need to think about uh, before you go and do that big deployment. Um, so when you do do the deployment, you do need more than just a, a BI tool, unfortunately. So this shows the typical components that you're going to need from the database to the you know, data integration or data movement tools to the storage. And we certainly recommend that if you are going to deploy BI in the cloud yourselves, 
then the more of these that you have stored in the same Cloud BI environment, the better it is. Okay, so um, so far we've given you an introduction to Cloud BI, we've shown you how fast and easy it is to get started yourselves, and we've given you some high level of the challenges you might face and the components you might need. So we're going to spend the remainder of today's session taking you through the best practices to help make your Cloud BI deployment more successful. And the first of those best practices is that you have to make it easy to access. So this essentially means any platform on any device, including mobile and tablet. So the growth of uh, uh, cloud has absolutely mirrored the growth in mobile. And there's a great report by Smart Data Collective that talks about how cloud is actually one of the key drivers helping IT to be able to adapt to the um, mobile workforce and their needs. And the best deployment method for adoption in the cloud is access through the browser. Uh, so in other words, avoid tools that are primarily designed for desktop consumption because these are not going to give you what you need. Um, you need to be able to support Windows users, Mac users, Linux users, and offer access to as many as possible because the bottom line is the more people that can access your Cloud BI environment, the more value that you're going to get from it. Okay, the second best practice is that your Cloud BI environment should be deployed with a centralised architecture with governance features. Um, so a centralised architecture is going to give your IT department the ability to properly govern your whole environment. This makes security a lot easier because IT can, can control who's able to do what and see who's doing what. It makes scheduling and maintenance and upgrades significantly easier. It enables IT to create a metadata layer where they're able to make it very easy for analysts by pre-mapping out the data for them. And um, that metadata layer can help you do some wonderful things such as lock down column names and specific calculations such as gross profit margin so you can ensure the reports are consistent throughout the organisation and aren't tampered with. And the ability to properly govern the Cloud BI environment is absolutely crucial to um, ensuring the trust in the reports that the analysts create for the end users because the fastest way to uh, lose trust in an organisation from a BI perspective is to pre you know, present uh, wrong or misleading uh, information to those BI consumers. And um, you know, IT ultimately have the ability to quickly and easily turn on permissions in terms of who can do what so they can assign the you know, appropriate permissions for data analysts or for non-technical BI consumers and they can uh, take away or give each of those permissions as it goes. So from a data analyst perspective, the good, a good Cloud BI tool will still give them all of the uh, tools that they want for data discovery, building dashboards, infographics, creating stories. And most importantly, the BI consumer, they get the environment where they can not only consume information through that dashboard, but they're able to collaborate and share that data with other users and actually make decisions within that platform. So we do recommend that you go with a centralised architecture um, where you can get all of these things in the one platform and try to avoid platforms that are going to require lots of different components and add-ons and especially desktop type tools because they're just not great for that Cloud BI environment. Uh, number three, make it secure. So when you go cloud, you need to be aware of the different security points and ensure that they're all set to the right standard for your organisation. And this includes uh, the security of your cloud infrastructure, for your network, for your storage, for your databases, and for your business intelligence tool. So there's no point completely securing one point of your Cloud BI environment if somebody can easily access it from another point. So if you are going down the Amazon path, they supply a lot of different information on each of these different security points. And when it does come to Cloud BI, uh, that part of it, make sure your tool is able to give you a lot of flexibility and control over the different permissions. So uh, this might mean uh, row and column level security, security for different reports, security for different users or different user groups. And certainly Yellowfin gives you uh, the ability to um, allow either reports or dashboards to be completely hidden from users that are not able to see that rather than actually just seeing a report and but just knowing that they don't have access to it. So you can completely hide that from the end users. Um, best practice number four is to go 
uh, multi-tenant if you are doing a SaaS deployment. Uh, so this is not going to apply to every business, but it's extremely applicable if you're deploying Cloud BI in a SaaS uh, type environment. So without a multi-tenant BI tool, it's very hard to build an environment um, where customers can only see their own data. And it's, it sure beats, uh, you know, the, the alternative ultimately is having to build a, a separate BI environment for each customer and uh, manage each of those uh, when each thing's change. So um, a multi-tenant BI environment lets you manage all of your customers um, under that one BI environment, under the one instance, and the data is partitioned, um, so each customer's data is partitioned, so um, there's no uh, way that another customer can access another person's data. And this is going to save you a lot of time when it comes to managing all of your customers' environments, so doing things such as upgrades in particular. And if you do want to change or add content, um, so you might have a new report that you want to give all of your customers, then you only need to make that change to the master corporate content, and you can keep control of the customer's experience using that. Uh, multi-tenant deployment strategy. So again, this is not for everyone. Um, you're not unlikely to need this if you're doing, say, departmental BI uh, solution, but if you do want to deploy to uh, different customers, um, certainly going for that multi-tenancy uh, is going to save you a lot of time, and um, so definitely try to find a tool that can do this. Best practice number five, design for scale and design for performance. So this one is super important because slow performance is the number one reason why BI projects fail. And people expect answers in seconds and certainly anything that takes more than 10 seconds on a browser is going to be simply too long for most users. So you've got to make it fast. Now as your BI environment grows and data volumes grow and as you get more concurrent users hitting the system, uh, the performance is going to take a hit, so the time that it takes to execute the query at the database side is going to be slower. So that means it's extremely beneficial if your database is able to cluster for scalability. Uh, so that way, if it does, it means you can ensure consistent, fast performance. So Amazon Redshift, which is AWS's analytical database, uh, can do that. It can scale to terabytes or even petabytes. Um, so it's definitely an option to look at, uh, but there are other MPP databases uh, out there that you can choose from as well, and you can deploy them on an AWS environment too. So in addition, um, you do need to make sure that your BI tool can scale as well, um, because you do want to grow your users over time, hopefully. And um, you know there are a lot of BI tools that are primarily designed for uh, analyst consumption, um, which means that because there's generally not hundreds of analysts inside an organisation, they do start to struggle when you get above 100 users. So Yellowfin is definitely designed for easy scalability. We have some of the largest implementations in the world. We have many customers with 10,000 plus and even a handful in the 100,000 plus users. So um, the point really here is make sure that your entire architecture is designed for load balancing and clustering end-to-end -end when you're deploying Cloud BI. So this is from the database to the BI tool, as well as how you're able to move the data as well. Um, otherwise, you're going to get bottlenecks. And uh, we mentioned earlier that one of the key benefits of Cloud BI is that ability to scale up and scale down. So if you don't build for scalability in your architecture, you will miss out on that benefit. And uh, sorry, when it comes to uh, deploying BI in the cloud, the issue of data loading times can be more pronounced. So this is definitely something that you need to think about. And vendors like Amazon give you a lot of uh, different options for doing data loading. Um, however, some are much better than others and can result in load times of up to 100 times faster than some of the traditional insert methods. So what we want to do here is just give you a couple of different very high level architecture um, samples, examples, sorry, for when you're loading data into the cloud. So obviously this is very general, but it should give you a little bit of a guideline or at least hopefully spark some uh, questions for you to uh, ask later on. So these architectures that we're going to show you, one is ETL and the other is ELT. So one is where you extract, transform, then load, and the other is when you load, then transform. So we're going to start with ETL. 
And this is, I guess, the typical architecture that most people might have in their minds because it's you know, very typical architecture if you're not deploying in the cloud that you might use in-house. Um, and in this case, you would be loading data either through an ETL or, or just directly into Amazon RDS or Amazon Redshift. And certainly, if you're using the same database type in RDS as you do on-premise, then you can keep the same schemas and everything there. So if you load into Redshift, uh, obviously, you're going to get a lot more performance. However, this standard architecture can cause you uh, problems down the track, and particularly when it comes to loading the data specifically into Redshift. So you might find that uh, when you do that, it can be very, very slow um, for data loading. So AWS have actually created a number of different mechanisms for you to take advantage to solve these loading performance issues. Um, so this is our uh, second design, so this is more ELT, it doesn't have to be ELT, um, but the main thing here is that rather than loading the data directly into Redshift, we're going to load the data into Amazon S3 first, um, where we can store the data and also keep a backup of it, and then we actually do our transformation um, once the data is inside uh, Redshift or RDS. And um, that's going to save you quite a bit of time. And the other options as well, if, particularly this is great if you want to uh, do anything that's, say, near real time, but you can do replication or change data capture directly into S3 from there. And uh, another really good option as well that's becoming more and more popular is to use um, Amazon uh, Direct Connect, which essentially is, will pipe the data directly to Amazon's infrastructure. So. Um, if you do do that, that's, that's the fastest way to get in there because your direct pipe into Amazon is not going to be potentially used by other customers. So you do have a lot of different options. This is certainly um, not prescriptive at all. There's lots of different variations. But um, we certainly want you to think about the different architectures uh, if you are cons you know, having any issues in when it comes to data loading. So best practice number six is plan for change. So your BI needs of today are likely to change in the near future. And it's just the changing nature of BI. So you want to make sure that your cloud BI tools can be configured to change as your needs change. So this might mean uh, rolling out new chart types or uh, giving out more permissions. So what tends to happen is your customers, uh, you, you'll deliver them a number of different reports and they'll ask for more and then they'll ask for the ability to create the reports themselves. So you want to be able to give them that as, as they request it. It might mean uh, rolling out collaborative features, um, you know, discussions or annotations, things like that. So planning for change is all about looking at your future roadmap and ensuring your Cloud BI tool can keep up with where you want to go. What, we, what we're what saying that you don't want to do is be locked into how a BI vendor prescribes how you should do stuff. So you want to be able to have a lot of flexibility there to meet the demands of your customers. Best practice number seven is that you want your BI environment to be used as much as possible. And to do that, you want to uh, really think about encouraging different ways for users to be able to share, discuss, and collaborate around the content. So, um, you know, try to make your Cloud BI environment as interactive as possible. And this really means encouraging two-way conversations and letting users add value and context to the reports, rather than just making it a portal that's like a one-way library access to data reports. Um, so if you do that, um, it's quite likely that users might use it in short bursts, but they're going to be less likely to use it for day-to-day -day use and really have discussions around the data. Ultimately, we're not giving them a really good reason to come back to it. They think they know it and they assume it doesn't change. So um, if your BI platform can encourage sharing reports with, other, with others and having discussions linked to those reports, um, then you're probably going to get a lot more value out of your BI tool and also make better decisions too, which is what it's all about. Um, so at Yellowfin, we do care a lot about collaboration. It's one of our unique differentiators where we've got a lot of recognition for. And we're constantly trying to think of new ways to help our platform collaborate. This is not something that we're saying that you have to do to be successful at Cloud BI, but just to give you a couple of ideas to think about. Um, so one of them, one example is Yellowfin Timeline, which behaves like a social media platform, which are probably the best platforms out there for collaboration. So Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, they're all based on a timeline that 
tracks your usage um, so you can subscribe to different users and groups and see what's been happening on that timeline. And this allows you to collaborate with different users on that timeline as well. And you can go in there and see what recent reports you've accessed. So Yellowfin comes with this out of the box and you can see from this screenshot here, you get a history of all the reports you've accessed. Um, you can start a discussion. Uh, you can add one or many interactive reports into a discussion, and get people to vote on ideas and you can even have those votes set up with a deadline and when you set that deadline the, the data gets snapshotted at the time of the decision and this is great because it means you can actually see how a decision was made and go back and, and uh, hopefully make better decisions in the future. Um, so this is one example of how to make uh, BI more collaborative. We're not saying that you have to use this, but um, just think about the different things you can do. And another example here is Yellowfin Storyboard, where we're bringing the presentation layer into the BI platform. So you get all the rich interactivity of your reports uh, that you would if you were just doing this inside a dashboard. Um, and that extends as well to um, collaboration features, so you can actually collaborate as you're making um, presentations as well. Uh, so again, you know, if you really want a super successful, highly used Cloud BI platform, make sure you're giving your users reasons to use that platform more, to visit, and getting value through communicating with each other. So you know, these are not things that you have to do, but we, we do strongly encourage um, that you think about different ways to make it more collaborative. So best practice number eight is to avoid lock-in and um, to do that you need to design for portability and by that we mean can you get your data out of the cloud platform and can you migrate your BI solution off that platform and either onto another cloud platform or potentially even back in-house. So um, this is you know, case that we, cases that we have seen before and it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you can just export your reports and your dashboards rather than having to build it again from scratch. And then finally, um, you want to avoid long-term contracts. And these contracts can uh, really keep you handcuffed and literally negate one of the major benefits of Cloud BI, which is that pay-as-you-go model. So we find that many BI vendors certainly try to push you for longer-term contracts, um, but we, we'd suggest here that you really don't want anything more than a one-year subscription. Uh, which leads us to best practice number nine, manage your costs. So ideally your Cloud BI costs should either reflect the scalability of the cloud or potentially how you charge your customers. And AWS gives you the management tools to monitor your usage and your costs. Um, and look out for these because you certainly don't want to be paying uh, for more than what you're using. And again, when it comes to BI tools, don't get locked into long-term contracts. Um, you want something that allows you to scale up and scale down as your business demands. Pricing and TCO really does matter. And that brings us up to our final best practice, which is have the right skill sets. Uh, so this could be, uh, the, the skill list that you see here might be many people within an organization or just one or a handful. However, if you are going to deploy Cloud BI successfully, you do need these basic skills. And um, there are certainly lots of online resources that cloud providers like Amazon offer and Yellowfin offer a whole heap of uh, great source of information for how to use our products through our wiki and our support portals. But if you don't have these skills internally, then you really do want to find a partner who has these skills. And Yellowfin certainly has a lot of partners all around the world um, who are happy to help you here if you need be. Uh, the other option is that you can use a BI vendor who's already built out the environment and use their platform. So on that note, I want to actually, uh, we, we have one of our partners uh, on the line with us today. Um, so I do want to introduce Adam from Mac2. And um, Mac2 have developed a very cutting edge Cloud BI environment uh, that uses Yellowfin and AWS. So I've invited Adam here today to tell us a little bit more about um, how he's worked with Amazon and Yellowfin to uh, uh, deliver some really cool stuff to their uh, customers. So Adam, can you hear me? Um, yeah, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and really thank you for your interest and in, uh, certainly the opportunity to talk to you today about uh, what we at Mac2Data are doing around the hosted BI service that we're offering to our clients. 
uh, we are using uh, Yellowfin uh, and we're using the Amazon AWS environment that John has just shown you uh, with a number of other, uh, if you like, customised tweaks that uh, certainly we've developed and sort of pull all of that uh, technology together to deliver what we call the, uh, the Cloud BI service that we offer. So um, Adam Sharp is, is my name, as John mentioned. Uh, I've been in the BI industry uh, for about 12 to 15 years, uh, working mainly in large multinational corporations actually across the Asia Pacific region. So I, along with my colleagues, have enormous uh, experience in the uh, in the consumer goods manufacturing area across the Asia Pac region. And, and over that time, we really got to see how BI is being used, certainly by large organisations, but obviously making making you know obviously drawing the conclusion, sorry, that this is a, an opportunity for a lot of other organisations out there. Uh, but the challenge most organisations have is the ability or the lack of ability, frankly, to to make it work well for them. So. So in combination with that realisation and obviously the technologies that have evolved over the last few years, we've sort of made the realisation that cloud delivery of BI is an enormous opportunity. Uh, and uh, so therefore uh, we've embarked on, on what we would call our, our cloud-based BI uh, solution whereby we provide that hosted service to our clients. And our clients are now able to get access to a full functioning BI uh, environment or solution without, absolutely without the need to manage any of that in-house in or any of that infrastructure uh, or the complexities of, of, of managing that, uh, having to resource it and find the skills and so on. Uh, we do all of that for them. And as John said, you know, in some of those surveys, organisations are readily acknowledging the value of cloud BI. Uh, but also though, um, uh, some, in fact most we would say, uh, would struggle to actually do it themselves successfully. So that's where our business model comes from. So. What you're looking at here is uh, an architecture diagram that, uh, that we've got um, a really very simplistic, absolutely simplistically summarises pretty much what John's just mentioned. But some of the key points I will touch on is, is you'll notice that we've got data interfacing into our cloud environment, which is the Amazon AWS EC2 uh, Redshift uh, technology sets. Uh, we say that, uh, you know, we, we like to say to people that all sources of data to your business are now fair game. That is that it's important that you're able to pull all of the data that's relevant to your business uh, into a place and start to integrate that. And the reality is more and more now, more organisations are using external data. So other cloud applications, for example, or other public data sources such as government data or weather data. Uh, and other external data sources. Equally, internally, there are usually numerous sources of data as well. It's very rare that an organisation has a single transaction system that looks after everything. So uh, we would, uh, we do offer the ability to integrate those multiple sources of data, both internally and externally, uh, into the one environment. Once it's in there, as, as I said, uh, we use the uh, Amazon Redshift technology um, and uh, massively scalable. Uh, operating uh, uh, over, uh, sorry, operating over that is uh, is Yellowfin as our reporting engine. Uh, we do rebrand that or reskin that as our Mac Two uh, uh, product, and uh, and uh, so the user experience is seamless. Um, so the user then interfaces with that uh, that reporting interface back via a web browser or a mobile device. And as John mentioned, with the proliferation of uh, mobile devices, that's even more compelling nowadays. So a very simplistic architecture there, but uh, from a, a client's point of view, it, it, it abstracts or takes out all of the complexity of having to manage all of that themselves. All we need to do is work on work on getting hold of the data for them or from them to interface into our environment. So uh, maybe uh, just jump onto why you use the cloud, John. Um, these are some interesting thoughts around that. Some of them, in fact, John's already uh, touched on, but. These are some of the compelling reasons that we've found in conversations with our clients and certainly talking to them about the benefits and so on is, you know, for example, it is a fully managed service, so they don't need to worry about doing any of that um, uh, management themselves. They completely outsource that to us uh, where we have expertise and they can then focus uh, their activities or their IT people on, on, on other activities. Um, speed to market clearly is important. We have an, uh, an environment up and running uh, already. Um, so we can get a new client uh, access to our environment you know, within half an hour to an hour or so and get data loading uh, very, very quickly. Uh, the security of the data is, is absolutely critical and one thing that we take enormously seriously. Um, clearly we're leveraging uh, the, the very robust security protocols that uh, Amazon provide, but in addition to that, 
uh, we ensure that all data transfer and, and, and web interfaces, if you like, is all fully encrypted. Uh, all data is, is encrypted at rest in the database and even to the point of uh, privacy and all sorts of other things, we have a very strong policy on our website that, that, takes, uh, that talks very deliberately about those things. So security and privacy is, is an extremely important thing for us and one thing that uh, everyone needs to be aware of. The accessibility from anywhere concept there is really around the fact that because it's now in the cloud, the traditional issues faced by um, you know, internal BI systems uh, where if someone wants to get access from a mobile device to an internal system, it's always difficult. You know, you've got VPN issues or firewall issues and so on. So that's a real challenge uh, in, in terms of the traditional model. Whereas a cloud model, all they need to do is get access to the internet, and most mobile devices these days do. Uh, once they have that access, they can get full access to their to their uh, their reports anywhere in the world that they have access. Uh, and obviously the lower cost of entry, so cost is, the cost of entry is a very compelling reason and as John mentioned a number of times, you know, they can, uh, our clients can invest as, as much or as little as they like. They can start small uh, and, and scale up as required, so, and the investment level uh, follows that. You don't have to worry about uh, building an infrastructure with an end uh, load in mind or an end scale in mind, you can uh, start small. And if you want to uh, buy more service, you do that. You just add more uh, capability to the environment and pay accordingly. So a very compelling reason both uh, also from a cost of entry point of view. So without uh, sounding, you know, obviously we're on a yellow thing conversation here, but without sounding too uh, <laughs> uh, subservient to, to the yellow thing guys, but uh, we have absolutely acknowledged that we couldn't have done this without yellow thing as a, as a partner and as a product. Um, we, uh, we looked at length when we, uh, we started this, uh, this concept. Uh, we're looking into the, the design and the other tools that are out there in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, yes, there are many out there, and frankly some are uh, better in some areas than Yellowfin, I fully acknowledge that. But equally though, Yellowfin are, are very strong in, uh, in a lot of other areas as well. These are the main reasons why we settled on Yellowfin. Um, so yes, as John mentioned, web delivery is absolutely critical. So we don't have to worry about, particularly in a cloud-based uh, service uh, concept, we don't have to worry about maintaining on-premise clients or on-premise uh, application installations. Uh, that would be a nightmare both to manage but also to navigate through internal IT policies and so on. So 100% web delivery for everything was, was absolutely mandatory. Uh, platform independence. So this is both from the client side but but frankly, more importantly, from, from our side, from a hosting point of view, uh, again, some of the bigger vendors out there are only Windows-based. Uh, uh, some others are, are obviously cross-platform, but uh, you know, the, the key thing was to be able to be uh, platform independent. So we're running the EC2 over uh, uh, Yellowfin, sorry, Yellowfin over EC2 running Linux, uh, and the scalability and the affordability that that means is, uh, is very compelling. Multi-tenancy for us was absolutely critical. So what this means is we can um, create uh, new environments within our one, uh, or oh, sorry, new uh, clients organisations within our one environment, without needing to put multiple installations of of the tools out there. We have the one installation, and we can just uh, create new instances within that one environment, fully secure, fully isolated from others. Uh, so again, that leads to a very scalable and very cost-effective uh, proposition. Mobility I've already covered off, but uh, clearly mobility from, from a Yellowfin perspective is very strong in combination with cloud delivery is, is, is world class. And the last two there around partnership and licensing. Partnership we've found the guys at Yellowfin to be very accommodating and very, uh, very welcoming in terms of trying to help us grow our business and certainly doing everything they can to assist us. Uh, and the licensing is, is probably the simplest licensing model out there in the BI landscape. It is a single license based on a per user. There's no concept of a, uh, a server license. Every user gets the same level of access from a license point of view. Uh, there's no license for a developer versus a reader and so on. So licensing is extremely uh, simplistic and frankly extremely cost effective. So overall, Yellowfin for us was a great, uh, great solution, great partnership. Adam, thank you so much for that. That was, that was fantastic and um, yeah, very much appreciate that. So um, that really uh, wraps up our Cloud BI best practices as researched by our customers and partners. Uh, so just a very quick recap on that. Uh, those were um, you know, make it easy to access, go with a centralised governor architecture with that metadata layer, 
uh, make sure it's secure, uh, go with multi-tenancy if it's a SaaS deployment, um, design for scalability and performance, plan for change, don't get locked in, manage your costs and ensure you have the right skills to make it a success. So um, as you do go through, uh, hopefully you can tick these off and um, have a very successful uh, Cloud BI implementation. Uh, so that brings us to the end of today's webinar. We hope that you've enjoyed this and got some really good takeaway points from it. And if you do want to get started uh, and up and running with your own um, Cloud BI environment with uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, there we're, we're doing a special promotional offer with Amazon where we can actually give you a uh, Amazon voucher um, if you contact us with your details. So that brings us to the end of today's presentation. So um, yeah, thanks once again and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you at the next one. All the best.